Welcome to the Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian Technician. We look at long time frame trades on weekly charts through the Market Buzz. Please follow me on Twitter or my articles page for more ideas. So lots going on this week with uh, some big news out of uh, Iran and Iraq. So we're gonna, uh, we've got that to deal with. But what I wanted to cover off today uh, was the state of the um, industrial metals. And the reason I want to cover that off, just do a deep dive into them to see what's going on. We signed the China trade deal you know, a while back, and now we're we're talking about getting the, or we, we agreed to the China trade deal a while back, and now we're looking for a signature next week. So what I wanted to cover off today is di deep dive into the industrial metals and just see what they look like and see if they're starting to respond better to a positive trade environment. So uh, when, when, under the umbrella of this deal, one of the things that happens is we expect global trade to improve. So China makes up 50% of the copper purchases, as an example, worldwide. So what I need to figure out for me is how to get, uh, how to find a, an easier, a smooth way to get invested in this. If if China's going to start to pop here, um, and and all of a sudden manufacturing starts to improve and and the trade friction that we had starts to go away, then we should see that in the charts. So when I look, I want to just go grab this chart list here, and we're just going to work through it alphabetically. But one of the things that I think should be happening. I mean, we've been in a big bull thrust since October, since the Fed started adding non-QE, and it's been a really rapid advance on the indexes. And so I'm hoping to see that on the industrials charts, especially in the last four weeks, uh, since the, the China trade agreement was announced for phase one. And one of the concerns I have is I'm not really seeing it on some of the charts. So I thought it was a good idea by reviewing all of them as, at a, as a group that we could kind of come up with some uh, general impressions. But when I look at this Alcoa chart, so obviously big aluminum. Now we've got some issues around uh, Boeing, so that might cause more problems here for for aluminum. But what, what I'm looking at on this chart is we really haven't done anything since October. I mean, we were slightly lower October 1, and but in, I'd say it's you know, fair to say in the last eight weeks, we haven't gone anywhere. So this chart really hasn't moved, but it is in aluminum or aluminium, depending on how you want to say it. So I think it's very important that we just kind of um, uh, pace ourselves with, with that. So under the different types of metals, obviously, there's going to be some difference. I do like this chart. This is the Aluminum Corporation of China. You can see that it jogged up early in December based on the news. And now it's it's up high and we're trying to get through call it five month highs or six month highs here and so that chart actually looks pretty good and i think it's that kind of thing that i want to see what i don't want to see is this momentum roll over just below zero here so we're right at the point where we want to check it and so a horizontal line at nine would be a valuable tool and so i would just go get the horizontal tool put nine on there and then make it a solid line and we'll color it blue and when we update that chart so we've got this friction level that we need to get out of it and you can see back here it was the same sort of basing idea we want to pop through there okay <clears throat> bhp billiton right the world's large one of the world's largest miners if not the world's largest miner one thing that we're noticing here is we're up against this kind of triple top so early call it april july june and july and now currently and when i look here you know it hasn't done anything since the signing so we popped up the first week and we're just flat so i don't know if it's waiting for the deal or if all the news is baked in the momentum is right at zero just barely above i mean it's not bad it's at two i guess so we like to see this get going but i think one of the things that surprises me is we you know on the backdrop of all of the other stuff going up so rapidly why isn't this so it's been underperforming in terms of relative strength and if it could start to get to new three-month highs here that would be kind of our first indication at this point we don't have it so one of the big miners bhp let's just say flat uh, not really going the right direction, but flat is okay. Um, here's Cameco, the uranium company, and obviously with all the the new power plants and stuff going in, 
nuclear power. Keep watching this chart, and this this dog doesn't hunt. It it has not been able to get anything going for a while. Uh, what I'm looking at here in terms of momentum is there's kind of a uh, previous peak in momentum. Perhaps if we can get through that, that would be my first clue. And then the second clue would be this big two-year downtrend in momentum, getting through both of those. That probably gets the price up to 10 bucks. And in that case, we'd be at four-month highs. And getting through four-month highs would be a pretty valuable uh, push. Uh, it's just such an iffy chart. The big problem is we're just not getting the, the type of trending we wanted to see out of out of Cameco. Uh, looking at Century Aluminum, this one's got a six month base building. PPO right at zero, so don't want to see it fail here. That would be an important perspective. So this chart's uh, another one that's just not really where we want it to be. Kind of right around zero is a bigger deal. Continental Gold, don't really want to go through a gold company. I thought I took most of those out, so let me just delete that one. Um, and we go down here okay compass minerals and so what we see on this one um, just generally uh, trending slightly higher here I'm not sure what they're what they mine for momentum looks okay this one actually looks more like a gold chart to me too uh, but it's just gently trending up here uh, I would say that's better it's not a name that I know that well um, constellate constellium um, and they're in the aluminum business as well. And this one is trending up right at its trend line. I want to see that hold, but look what momentum's already doing. It's already rolling over. And again, we just barely, um, you know, this previous high was $14. We got to $15 and now we're starting to break down. So not, not the thrust that we wanted to get. And so as the... Uh, as it comes back to zero here, I want to start to see this bounce back up. <clears throat> Here's EMX Royalty Corporation, uh, it says general mining, but uh, again, just it's okay. The, this one isn't going to be a big influencer here. What I want to see is the names like Lundin and Freeport. And here's Freeport. And you can just see we're, we haven't done anything for five weeks. Uh, we've got the thrust on the signing of the deal or on the announcement of the deal and nothing since. So next week, this needs to break out through 14. Now, it used to be called Freeport, McMoran and Gold. So maybe on the back of some of the gold moves that we're having with gold trying to get through $1,600 here, perhaps this is going to get some spark on that but it hasn't so far um, so we'll keep watching it there is a slight uptrend in momentum here I will say at least the PPO is up nice and high it's at five that's pretty high um, it looks scrunched down on this chart but five is a pretty high reading the one thing I would say is this horizontal resistance goes all the way back into 2017 and you could really say back into 2016 so this is a pretty important place for Freeport it's got to get going uh, I think I jumped two there. Uh, first Quantum Minerals. So what I like about uh, First Quantum is that it's been trying, you can see it's been trying to base here and get to new six month highs. Momentum, again, right at zero. And I'm gonna say that quite a bit. Momentum right at zero. And again, in the last four or five weeks, it hasn't really done anything. So this was the, the announcement of the deal and it trended down so far this week and we're a couple of days in, right? Um, it, it's holding its own, it's right in the middle of the range, call it 10 bucks. And we wanna see this start to fire up. So all of these charts really start to need to turn up here and get a little push. So next week when the announcement is made or when the signing is made, perhaps we'll we'll see these charts, I'll get, get more conviction to turn up, but this would be something that we could watch for. Uh, ferrous Globe, non-ferrous metals, a uh, big downtrend in momentum here. I'm not really interested in buying this. This was a $17 stock uh, just under two years ago, and it's a 96 cent stock now. So there's obviously something wrong um, for them. And based on the, the trend change, it would have to work a lot harder for me um, to get involved. I will say from a momentum perspective, it looks pretty interesting because it's got the highest momentum it's had in a year. Uh, but again, the chart hasn't done anything for four or five weeks. Looking at Haynes International, this is just sideways chop, non-ferrous metals. Um, so nothing I really want to see here. Momentum is trying to go um, higher, but it's rolled over recently. And again, this is a weekly chart. Look what it's done kind of in the last three or four weeks. Not, not the price action I want to see um, after the signing of the trade deal. 
Hut Bay Minerals, this one started to look perky last week, um, getting to new four month highs. Really nice to see, but couldn't close there. Closed on the lows for the week and is now trying to hold above its 10 week. It's still below its 40 week, which is down sloping. So in general, you know, macro picture, the charts making lower highs, lower lows. The problem we have here, this, the, I'll call it $3 level has to hold. Right now we're trying to hold on the on the 10 week. But this uh, PPO momentum wave, really considering the good news out of, out of the trade deal or whatever, you know, we got the thrust up on the trade deal weekend sideways for four weeks again. So I don't know if the market is just waiting for the final signature um, or whatever, but they don't seem to be expecting a big change in volume yet or an improvement in, you know, in uh, 2020 earnings or something. Um, this is platinum, so a whole different sphere of business, but this chart's been just incredible uh, from $1 to 11 in a year. Anyway, PPO up nice and high at the 20% level. That's just crazy good. And it's been one of the strongest uh, mid cap stocks going. So really, really strong. Intrepid Potash, nothing really there. I don't think that's pretty ugly chart. Uh, so nothing we really want to spend much time on. This one should do better. This is Ivanhoe Mines. And what I would think here from Ivanhoe is, you know, we, we got the thrust coming out of the 10 and the 40 week cross here and we've come up for four weeks and again sideways. So while the while the stock market has gone higher, all of these things have just gone sideways. And that's one of the concerns I'm having is that they just don't seem to be getting any momentum. And here we are uh, bouncing just barely off zero. So this is at least bullish that it's bouncing. The fact is we really need it to start to turn up and again if it could get through 350 then all of a sudden you're on to a new uh 52 week high or two year high so that would be pretty bullish and we're at 308 right now so it's still 10 percent away from getting through that high kaiser aluminum big company um what we've got here is the uh horizontal line uh you know, providing resistance for the last two years, briefly popped above it on the news and then fell below. PPO looks like it's rolling over right at this level. So to me, it doesn't look like um, in the aluminum space, we're getting the, the bump that we expected. Lithium, this chart um, uh, broke out last week and then this week tried to add on to it and it's done a pretty good job, big surge. Um, on the daily chart, I think what I'm interested in, look at that nice break of the downtrend line. And again, PPO starting to turn up here, still under zero. We've seen this movie before where it turns up under zero and stalls when it gets up to, so just saying no momentum. There's a few clues that I like here. Um, we're trying to break this downtrend in relative strength that's gone on for two years and it's ticked up nice and high. Um, lithium closely associated with the uh, electric cars. Part of the news around um, Tesla and the China factory opening in China, stock hitting new highs. <clears throat> All of that adds up to a pretty nice backdrop for lithium. So if this could start to move, this is one chart that actually looks pretty good. Uh, Lundin Mining. What I like about this chart is it did actually make new 52 week highs and I can't beat it up too much for the last five weeks. I'll say it closed here, closed, closed, closed. So four weeks of relatively flat closes. It is trying to make higher highs and higher lows. We'll see how it responds in the next two weeks here. But again, getting through this new 52 week high, that's bullish. The problem I have, it kind of broke through it and then hasn't done anything since. So. Um, a little bit odd that way. I do like that it's uptrending. It's well above zero. So the momentum is okay. I wouldn't let it turn down here. If this little three month trend breaks, I'd, I'd probably want to make sure my stops were in place for it. Linus Corporation uh, just says general mining. So here we are a two year uh, sideways trend uh, a brief pop with everything else on on the announcement of the phase one deal and then nothing so ppo rated zero don't want to see that go negative the chart doesn't look that exciting to me anyway it hasn't done much for two years i i would rather it cycle big so at least you could trade it but it's just been sideways chopped so it's a little hard to even own for a trade 
Brigham Minerals, you can see IPO'd in April, call it 1750, and it's sitting around $21, but really no real trend there. So kind of hard to own that one. Next, the resources. Um, again, haven't I don't know what they do. It's just uh, listed under general mining. But what we see here is an $8 base. And under that uh, price point, obviously, it would take its next leg lower. So this big downtrend since it IPO'd back at call it 15 bucks, 14 bucks, um, briefly moved up and then it's been sliding for two years. It's got to really start to hold around this $8 level. And I do like the fact that the, the PPO has been making higher lows. Uh, I would like this downtrend from the previous two peaks here to start to break and, and perk up. Um, just from a momentum perspective, it needs to get some lift. It has a huge yield at 6.25%. Anglo-American, uh, so you can see that we've just been trading uh, around this 1475 high for the last nine months, keep butting up against it. No, the momentum isn't huge here. We're at 4%, which, you know, isn't too bad. I think the big picture for me is I want to start to see this break out again. And let's just shrink up this chart. It's got too many years on it and too much range. So if we can get there that shows the price trend a little better so we had the big gap up on the announcement of the phase one trade deal sideways for three or four weeks 1480 was our high and we reversed off of that we need to get through this 1475 level uh, 1448 level so now we're just trying to work through this can it finally push up and again another chart stalling at the four week uh, four or five weeks here sideways so Norsk Hydro, this one, uh, aluminum, big downtrend, trying to break through a four or five, maybe even a six month sideways base here. Finally broke this big downtrend, but it hasn't really popped off that. I'll say when it did break initially, you got two weeks of move, and then we haven't done anything since then, just ground sideways. So this has to get firmly through $4. Um, and if it could start to do that, you'd probably get a PPO above zero. Positive momentum is usually, you know, part of the uptrend that you want to see. And the last time it got above four bucks, that was not a bad place to get involved as well. So keep that in mind for Norsk. Norsk Nickel, just crazy. That one's been a really, really nice chart. Uh, broke out from three-year highs here back I'll call it early 2019 at around $20. It's up around 30. And even after the trade deal, it, it just went up and to the right. So it still continues to climb uh, from, I'll call it $28 to 32. So uh, up a little more than 10% since the trade deal announcement. Um, PPO's at the highest level in five years. So that's a pretty positive uh, thing. It might, you know, if it rolled back, there's there's nothing saying it won't just wobble nice and high here. That's a pretty high momentum level. Um, looking at Novo Resources, general mining, and again, a new 52-week high here, but haven't done anything in the last five weeks. And just, I'll, I'll call it a relatively gentle trend higher in terms of momentum. Would really like to see that get some surge to it. And so one of the things I expected, um, and maybe I should just go point out on the Shanghai chart. Let me go get that dollar SSEC. So what we see on the Shanghai chart is it's been pushing up quite nicely since the announcement in early December. Um, stalled here just briefly, trying to get through new highs. And this week it's still pushing up. Uh, Monday was down a little. Tuesday was up nicely. And so if this can trend up, and again, we're at new six-week highs here. But what we really want to see... Um, if if China's going to start to accelerate, then we should start to see these miners follow along. Uh, that's not the right one. I uh, just need my tab now. Where did it go? Hmm. I lost it. There we go. Next gen energy. And what we see on this one, this has just been trending down slightly. I think the problem here... I just want to make sure that, yeah. Um, one of the things on this next gen chart, again, I think this one is uranium. And it just doesn't seem to be, you know, getting any positive momentum. So the same sort of industrial disease that Cameco has, it just keeps drifting down and to the right. 
Here's platinum group metals. And what we see on platinum group is a sideways um, consolidation for a year. If you're familiar with Wyckoff, this looks very Wyckoffian, except the base is extremely wide, almost 18 months. And and if it could finally start to turn up here, and it looks like it's trying to do that, but I think I'd want this one to firmly get through the $2 level. This was a $39 stock, it's down to 185, so it's probably had a couple of splits in here, yeah, one to 10. Um, so it's just trying to hold its price point. Uh, can it finally get going? And so far, um, it's not anything like the other platinum chart. Okay, Rio Tinto. This is much like the BHP, and I'll go back and compare the big five right at the end here. But what you see on this uh, $60, trying to get through it, and we saw it on BHP where it's kind of stuck under a level. And I would expect these big miners to really be rocketing up on the China news, and they have not done that yet. So that continues to concern me. Full stochastic rolling over. We did make it to new four month highs on relative strength, so that's a little more bullish. Um, but momentum, relatively speaking, is pretty weak. It's just barely above zero and looks like it's rolling over. So wanna see Rio Tinto get a, a kick. Southern Copper, this one looks really nice. And what I like about it is we've got an uptrend in momentum. Price has broken through a horizontal support and resistance layer. It's at new 52 week highs. But again, it surged on that December announcement and then sideways for four weeks. So you see how all these charts are very tentative, just haven't been able to go. And I think it helps to understand the whole group. Um, you know, one of the better charts we've seen is that LAC chart. Um, uh, the lithium chart and it, it's been trying to break out here's silver crest metals and it's turning up here it says non-ferrous but i think the the more important thing here is it's made a higher high in price and not a higher high on the wave here so this needs to continue to go back up you know nothing wrong with the chart as long as the ppo stays up nice and high like this up at a level like 10 percent that's just fine and you can see the uptrend on the stock Silica Holdings is more about frac sand, um, pretty much a three year down cycle. And looking at Smart Sand, same issue, uh, went public and it's been a disaster since then. So 32, um, big push to start 2019 and then nothing for the year. It's just consolidating in here. At least momentum is trending up, but below zero. So, you know, looking back on the chart, it hasn't been below zero. Um, really since the IPO it kind of came out uh, had its initial decline and then took off to the upside so this chart at least um, was in a big uptrend now it's been consolidating for a while want to see it get back through its 40 week average and turn back up above zero in momentum that would probably get me a little more interested silver corp metals um, horizontal support and resistance layers broken it's up to the new high this is probably a silver stock um, just based on on the price action since May. Uh, tech resources, so this is a big Canadian company, but one of the things about um, tech resources, they have a lot of met coal, which is typically exported to China. And so if China's gonna be smelting steel, they need met coal. So this is a pretty important trend line on this chart, is it's been declining. Um, remember the trade uh, tariffs were started roughly around January 2018. So we've been seeing this big push down. And and with this um, dragged out, is that the right way to say it? Uh, with this uh, long time frame here, one of the problems we're having is, you know, this momentum needs to start to improve. I'd be happy if it broke through this three year trend line because they have a lot of other products called um, cobalt, zinc, copper, etc. But again, this chart hardly jumped on the news and is stuck pretty much at, you know, in the bottom end of the range here, at least BHP and Rio were up near the top end of the range. This chart hasn't even got, got that sort of perspective on it. So, and the scooter ranking is telling you it's pretty weak. So, okay. Um, Trilogy Metals, this one's just been chopping sideways. At least it's trending up a little bit here. Momentum just going above zero. 
you know, it was a big, beautiful uptrend. It's now kind of consolidated for a while. This one might be more interesting than most of the ones we've looked at today. Uh, energy fuels, pretty much sideways for three or four years. I don't find anything particularly exciting to get involved with this one, especially with this gap down on the chart. Momentum is trying to, there's a big downtrend here. We're starting to get through that. I think at least that would be a positive place to start to look. But again, the chart doesn't have a whole bunch of price action that I'm interested in. So I'd probably let somebody else fight that stock. Here's Vale out of Brazil. And, and I've shortened this to a three year period. And the reason was there was a big updraft. And so the chart all got shrunk down. But again, it's it's had a PPO below zero for a year. It's just barely moved up, but after it broke through, it really hasn't done anything and it's gone sideways. So we kind of got the pop on the news from the China trade deal and then gently up, at least it's been going up, but it still hasn't taken out the July highs. Um, so again, if you remember BHP and Rio Tinto hadn't got through the July highs and we saw the horizontal support and resistance of Fed um, Freeport MacMoran, not FedEx, but uh, Freeport. <laughs> and so with all of that, what I think the big picture is, we haven't seen the industrials start to spike yet. And if they start to spike, that would get me a lot more positive on the trade deal itself. Um, last one is Westwater Resources, pretty much down and out. So nothing really interesting there. I might even just delete that chart. Uh, not a whole bunch to like about it. So anyway, let's do a quick review of the majors now. But the point I want to make is most of the charts don't look good enough yet that the it looks like the industry is going to thrust up. So here's BHP sideways for most of 2019 and sideways for the last four weeks since the China trade deal. Looking down here for Freeport MacMoran, uh, what you see here is, you know, no real price action for the last two years. I will say there is a downtrend here that was in play. Let's draw that in. And, and what you see on this downtrend is at least on the China trade deal news, it jumped up and it's consolidated sideways for four weeks. So let's not throw it out. At least momentum has moved positive. But we, we want to see all of these charts start to respond with that big upside move next week on the signing or shortly thereafter. And if we don't get it, I'd be very worried because all of these are very close to a rollover level. Uh, working our way down to Rio Tinto. Again, the three tops here in 2019 hasn't done really anything. It's got lower highs in momentum. So I want to see this start to perk up. Um, tech resources is the fourth one. And just, you know, this big downtrend in tech resources has to get better. They did have problems um, in their zinc properties in Canada. So uh, that that might be dragging down the stock as well. But I would expect that this stock starts to starts to accelerate the moment we get um, more more industrial activity in China because they do a lot of uh, met coal for smelting. And then the last thing I've got here is that this horizontal level at 14 needs to get broken on Vale. So we see it kind of on all the major charts, uh, all the major miners, this um, friction level. And so they should all turn up together in the next week or two with the announcement. And with that, we should be able to get back into these metals areas. So thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesday and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. You can also catch recordings on the Stock Charts TV channel, or sorry, on their YouTube page. When you, um, when you get a chance, there's also the Canadian technician right at the bottom. I'd encourage you to check out some of the videos I've put there, the most recent one on gold. So with that, thanks very much. Uh, watch closely off the trade deal and just see if these industrial charts can start to pop. We're all set up for it now. Thanks. Bye-bye.